I was going to do the program on smells. That's right, smells. Uh, does something smell good or does it smell bad? I still might talk about that a little bit, but on this weekend I want to talk to you about your future and perhaps an opportunity for you to make your mark in a new and emerging way to communicate around the world and truly build your business and build your brand. And if you'll just give me a little bit of time this weekend, I think we can find out if this could be for you. The program is called The Experience, the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience. My name is Stan Houston. The program begins right now. Well, we are back. Let me tell you something. Just as I was beginning this program, I kind of heard a voice say to me, be glad. Now, I mean that. You see, as I'm putting this program together, I've got a number of challenges and a number of things I've got to get done, and some of them are really difficult to do because right now I'm an entrepreneur making about two different projects, three different projects work, that's why I hopefully will be a good coach for you as an entrepreneur because I've experienced it and I experience it every day and I'm learning every day and passing some of that on. However, I was a little bit, just as I was putting the program together, discouraged about a couple things and then all of a sudden, for some reason, I just heard kind of the expression, be glad, be glad. And each time I kind of heard that in my head, I thought of something that, you know, you're right. <laughs> that will be taken care of and that's important. Yes, I can do that. Yes, that problem doesn't need to be solved for a couple more weeks. And in all of that, I just kind of heard Jesus saying to me, Stan, just be glad. You have today. You have Friday. You're getting a chance to talk to people about things that are important to you. Uh, it's a Labor Day weekend. That's a time for some rest and reflection and uh, enjoy the holiday with family and friends. Your children are doing pretty well. Stan, be glad. So I'll just tell you that that is kind of the voice I heard today. And if that happens to be something that will help you, <laughs> may it go well with you. <laughs> Be glad. Well, a couple of things. First of all, here's what happened. Uh, as I've been trying to work out a relationship with my uh, oldest daughter, and we've had a, we've had some difficult times. Uh, things in the family have not always gone as well as we want. <laughs> what else is new? And I've been working very hard to maintain a relationship with my oldest daughter, and I've made a point that that was going to be so important to me that, uh, as I said to my wife, I will not die in alienation from my daughter. Whatever it takes, I'm going to do everything I can to start to build a relationship with her. And in doing so, we both kind of uh, got attracted to a uh, thriller writer. Now, I'm normally not into thrillers. I don't really read a lot of fiction myself. But there's a uh, thriller writer by the name of Daniel Silva. And it really is. You mean, it is one great character. His name is Gabriel Alone, and he is an Israeli secret agent. But he also makes part of his living as an art restorer. And he usually is the focus. Some great episode of a you know, world-saving significance needs to be taken care of. And uh, Gabriel, this uh, little artist takes care of it. And we've enjoyed the stories. And so we've kind of gotten to the point, and this is always good. Um, she, for some reason, likes, likes him, and it's really not like her. To me, it's not really my thing, but I've kind of liked it. And so now we both read the books together. You know, whenever they come out, what happens is that she buys a copy for Dad. 
And I'm really grateful. She says, Dad, whenever a new Daniel Silva book comes out, don't even worry about it. The day it comes out, it's going to arrive in your mailbox. Compliments of me, and we'll read it together. And we'll talk about it and enjoy it. Oftentimes, like a lot of those things, it's rather predictable. But because it's also a good thriller, you never know quite how it's going to end up. Obviously, the good guy will probably make it in the end, but hmm, getting there might be quite an adventure. Well, I'll just share that with you, because here's what happened. In the last line of the last book, there was a comment in which one of the persons who uh, was not the heroine, but was not <laughs> the bad guy, but was very much in between in relationship between both of them. And it went to the point where at the very end of the book, even though life had not been good, something had turned out better than she thought. Maybe it was going to be okay after all. And as she walked by a church, the line that was used it was good. It had the smell of forgiveness. And when I read that line, it had the smell of forgiveness. I said, what a wonderful line. You see, I'm, a, I, I'm not a writer, but I am a communicator, and I love the well-turned word. It had the smell of forgiveness. One of my favorite expressions, which... Uh, is, of course, not original with me. I took it from some ancient uh, Vedic scriptures in India. But uh, it applies even to those of us who are not the followers of that faith tradition in any way. But the expression was this, the souls that love God are like horses. They know each other by smell. And then, <laughs> yeah, but... What is that? Yeah! Isn't it true that sometimes you just know? <laughs> it's not that they have some distinct odor, of course, but yeah, they just know. And there's something about them and who they are, and even though nothing may be said, you just kind of know. They're one of the tribe. They're one of the followers. They're one of us. Just as God came to be one of us, that friend is also one of us. The souls that love God are like horses. They know each other by smell. And then I talked to my daughter about that. And we both agreed because we've had a lot of things go and come. And she said, yeah, Dad, that's right. The smell of forgiveness. We all need that. Yeah, Dad, forgiveness does smell, and it smells good. You know, forgiveness does smell, and it smells good. You know, um, I need to do more of that. Um, since forgiveness smells good, there probably should be some more forgiveness on my part, and uh, perhaps on your part, and oftentimes, I really like this stage of the year, particularly the Labor Day holiday in America. It kind of signifies, particularly in North America, that most of the schools are now back in session from the summer break. Oftentimes, the Labor Day is when those people who have summer homes uh, use that weekend to kind of close them up because winter will soon be coming. And uh, it's like almost it's a new beginning. Now you got to get back to work a little more serious. Uh, you can't take off on Fridays anymore at one o'clock and go to the lake or just take it off. You, you got to be a little more intent about your work. So uh, that's kind of what happens, the kind of the frame and flame and flavor. There's another smell word. Frame, flame, and flavor of the time. And of course, very shortly, our friends in the Jewish tradition will celebrate Rosh Hashanah which, of course, is the new year, which usually falls in the, the September-October part of the year. And I've always said that um, they probably have it right, the uh, 
celebration of the new year, and then uh, the ten days of the days of awe, and then, of course, the day of repentance, Yom Kippur, which is the holiest of the holy days in the Jewish calendar. I find myself oftentimes uh, in fellowship celebration with those holidays. So, the smell of forgiveness. That's nice. And so, uh, for this weekend, I want it to be passed on to you. Actually, uh, someone said is, Stan, you talked about stupid and the list of things that are stupid. And when I was sharing this with them, they said, uh, and you know, one of the good exercises would be is, uh, what are some of the things that smell? They smell bad in our business practices. Or perhaps they have a good flavor, a good smell in our business practices. The more we can take actions and give them a sensory experience, the more they mean to us and the more we catch them as a part of who we are. So that, was a, that wasn't a rant, was it? No, I was just kind of reflecting, and there we are, a little bit about uh, things that smell and the smell of forgiveness and a new year and being ready to uh, do the right thing. I'm staying used to This is the weekend, and this is Radio on the Edge. This is the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience, and many of your great podcasts, and I'd like to say we're going to be one of them, have now determined that that's a good word. It's not just a program. It's not just a show. If we do it right, it truly is an experience. We'll be back. Day by day, day by day. And we are back. In the next few minutes, I simply want to ask you to join me. I want some of you out there to raise your hand because now the program is just for one person. That's right. Oftentimes when I teach radio, in fact, whenever I teach radio, and I do that quite often and I'll be doing it a lot more because uh, radio is not going away. Now, the radio might disappear and the smartphone may be the instrument. But radio, the power of the spoken word, well done and with power and uh, precision and flavor and color and energy and emotion, radio will never die. Never. It'll be different, but it won't ever die. I want to get very serious on the Christian Entrepreneur Network about the new talk media. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. And I'll be very honest with you, right now, I'm using primarily my own abilities and my own concepts to do this. I'm beginning to seek people who will sponsor the program. I'm beginning to seek people who will be occasional guests and teachers on the program. But what I would really like to do is to see if any of you are serious. You're looking at your life and your business and the opportunities. And by the way, the podcast business is growing. As I pointed out in another presentation, the half hour no, just like us, it's 20 minutes. The 20-minute podcast from the New York Times, obviously one of the great newspapers, the 20-minute podcast now has more downloads every day than the print edition for the day. Now, can you imagine that? That there are more downloads for the podcast than the people who actually pay the money for the print edition. Now, you think about that. <laughs> Um, 
First of all, that's kind of a double whammy. First of all, a lot of those people may not be paying for it quite the price of a newspaper. On the other hand, it also means that all of that money spent on newsprint and all of that printing and all of that ink, a lot of that might just be kind of sunk costs and a little bit of a waste of time and energy. Maybe they could be just as well by putting it online and with audio presentations. If you're serious, now we're not only going to have the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience, but what we want to do is to have a whole, and we'll use this metaphor, we'll use the horse metaphor, a whole stable. And that's usually the term when you've got some real talent in a show place space. You oftentimes say they're, you know, they're the people in the stable. They're there. We can haul them out, <laughs> drag them out, and we can use these people from time to time. They're in our stable. I want very much that the Christian Entrepreneur Network would become not only the uh, spirit home of the startup nation, but I want us to become one of the spirit homes of the uh, Christian-led, Christian-based, Christian-thoughtful podcasts in the world. A lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are trying it. Most people are doing it poorly. Most people aren't doing it well because there's an art to it and there's a science to it and there's a performing way to it. But I want to know if any of you would like to raise your hand and say, Stan, I would like to know more about this because I would like to work with you and I would like to find a way that we could begin to make the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience and many other podcasts make them really go and grow. That, hey, I would love that when Mission Magazine prints their 30 best business podcasts, and they do that, and some of them are rather strange and rather unusual and uh, they kind of smell a little bit different. But I would love if what the Christians produce, not only in terms of it, the content, but the creativity, the energy, the use of something that touches the heart as well as stirs the mind, that does not bore people, that strikes people occasionally, strokes people occasionally, and in some way and in some place in their life, something changed. Just something. An understanding, an encouragement, a remembrance. Something changed. And maybe for a day, maybe for a week, maybe for many years. I'll always remember that one line. The smell of forgiveness. That's with me for the rest of my life. This one little sentence in a book. I'm going to remember Daniel Silva and the smell of forgiveness probably until I die. That we actually do things like that. So if you want to be one of those persons, I would love to hear from you. All right? <laughs> Stan. Houston at gmail.com stanhouston at gmail.com now I know most of you aren't interested you don't want to do this and that's why this is not for you so uh, thank you for uh, kind of sticking with it and listening to it but maybe you know somebody who needs to be encouraged somebody who uh, loves to talk is pretty good at it You've oftentimes thought, you know, that you ought to be on the radio. You've kind of got the voice and the gift of gab and the energy for it. Have you ever thought about being on the radio? Now, I get asked that all the time. <laughs> you ever thought about being on the radio? And I said, well, yeah, because I've been on the radio for 40 years. And they say, oh, that explains it. <laughs> if you know people like that or if you're that one person, I would love to talk to you and see if as we start the new Labor Day year, that perhaps there could be a new beginning and a new way of doing business. I have other friends and colleagues and people in the business, and I think if we can put the right combination of people together, people who you know love Jesus, love the smell of each other, all of the souls that love God, uh, 
and love something about communicating with power and precision and possibilities and able to communicate energy, compassion, love, mercy, and forgiveness. I would love if mercy and forgiveness would flow out of every program we do. And if you're one of those persons, I would love to talk to you. I'm Stan Houston. This is Radio on the Edge, and this is radio that might be just for you. And again, thank you for your time. We're just about 20 minutes. Remember, it turns out most good podcasts now have discovered the same rule we have. The TED Talk is 20 minutes. The Good Podcast is 20 minutes. The Commute Time is 20 minutes. That uh, New York Times a podcast, 20 minutes. Just what we've been doing all along. So 20 minutes. Take 20 minutes every day to... Uh, just take a time out and uh, stir your mind and uh, encourage your ears and uh, find out if you can have something about your heart that's touched and uh, take a little action. Do something different. Think differently. Treat somebody else differently than you normally would. How about that? Have a good weekend. Best and blessings. We'll be back. Again, God bless us all. Everyone. Bye for now.